This lesson is part of the TI Inspire CX2 Technology Student course. In this lesson, we see how to enter data and formulas in the spreadsheet application. Start a new document and insert a spreadsheet application. Just like a regular spreadsheet, rows are numbered and columns are labelled using letters, which means each cell in the spreadsheet has its own unique reference. In this session, we use relative and absolute references in formulas as we explore a problem about recursive square roots. We'll start by entering the calculation for the square root of 2 in cell A1. In cell A2, we start with an equal sign because we're entering a formula. We calculate the square root of 2 plus the answer from cell A1, which was also the square root of 2. We'll do the same again in cell A3. Starting with an equal sign, we type in the square root of 2 plus the previous answer. Now, we could continue just typing this formula. However, it's recursive, so we'll navigate back to cell A2, press Menu, select Data, then Fill. Arrow down to cell A10 and press Enter. Now press Escape. Let's go back to cell A3. There are a few things we should notice here. The formula that we just filled through cell A3 is the same as the one we originally typed. There is a difference between the content of the cell and what it displays. The cell contains a formula, but it displays the results. So cell A2 displays the value 1.847, which is the calculated result from the formula the square root of A1 plus 2. Cell A3 displays the value 1.96157. The formula is the square root of the value in the previous cell plus 2. The cell formula always points to the previous cell. This is called a relative reference. The cell being referenced is relative to the location of the formula. Now, I want to have a look at the value in cell A10. I could just arrow down or press Control 1. This jumps to the end or bottom of the data in this column. We can see that the result is really close to 2. I wonder if we started with the square root of 3 and added 3 each time, would the result here be really close to 3? Press Ctrl and 7 to jump to the top of the column. I'll change the calculation in cell A1 to the square root of 3. And in cell A2 to the square root of A1 plus 3, so previous answer plus 3. Now we need to fill down. The calculation appears to be approaching some number, but it's definitely not 3. Indeed, it's not even a whole number. So that begs the question, are there any other numbers that will lead to a whole number? To help explore more efficiently, we can change some of our cell references to something called an absolute reference. Let's start by putting the number we want to explore in cell B1. We know what the result looks like for 2, so we'll try that number again. Now navigate back to cell A1. This time, because we're entering a formula, we'll start with an equal sign. And we'll type in the square root of B1. For the formula in cell A2, we type equals square root of cell A1, our previous cell, plus our seed value, which is always stored in cell B1. So we put some dollar signs before the B and also before the 1. Now fill down. We 
we can see the difference between the relative reference and the absolute reference. The relative reference is to the previous cell. The absolute reference, the one with the dollar signs, always points to cell B1. The dollar sign preceding the B locks the reference to column B. The dollar sign preceding the number locks the reference to the specified row. As we have a dollar sign attached to both, we've locked our reference to cell B1. To fully appreciate the difference here, let's change the value in cell B1 to a 3. Notice that the entire spreadsheet updates. We don't need to fill down again. So let's see what cell A10 holds for us now. Rather than jumping to the bottom of the column, I'll press Ctrl G and type in A10 and press Enter. OK, let's try a seed value of 4. Since we've got lots of values to explore, rather than jumping up and down, I'll make things even quicker again. In cell B2, I'll just type the formula equals A10. It's kind of like automatically copying and pasting this value. Now, let's change the seed value in cell B1 to a 5. What about 6? Oh, it seems that 6 results in a whole number or integer. What will the next integer value be? Let's record the results. I'll label column C as seed. Our seed values could be 1, 2 and so on. We'll record the results in column D. I'll call it data. So, I have created some data. I can't see a pattern yet, but maybe a graph might help. Insert a graphs application. I'll press Ctrl I, select graphs, and I'll change the graph entry type to scatter plot. We'll graph the seed versus data. As all my points are in quadrant 1, let's zoom to quadrant 1. It does look like a pattern is forming, which means there's probably an equation to be found. But that's all we have time for in this session. Thanks for watching.